Brad says an XRP ETF is gonna happen. We just need some time to get through the regulatory mess. We're also gonna talk XRP price at the end. Monero gets delisted. Privacy tokens, not what the government wants. Well, hey, government, maybe we want you to work harder. And Voyager gets made whole. Well, kind of, because they got money from someone who got money from someone who got money from someone. Yes, Crypto Hot Potato is finally getting resolved. Get ready to cash those $25 checks. Yeah, I'm not kidding about that. Hola, mi amigos. It's Dora. No, it's not. It's Crypto with Klaus. And if you haven't figured it out by now, just, I don't know, restart your day. Roy Wolgan says, Klaus, being in crypto is like my wife. You need to be hard when entering, and if you're soft, it'll cost you profits. So juicy. Thanks for the videos. Well, thank you for the warm humor, kind sir. Heat map is up on the screen. I've got the one month heat map. Just to show everyone what the trend has been like for the month. Now, there's been some big pullbacks here, but also some big gainers. In the last month, ton is up 175%. Whiff is up 71. Look at HBAR though, down 24%. Matic down 30%. Dot down 25%. XRP down 15. ADA and Soul kind of go in the opposite direction there. VeChain healthy pump to 11.5%. With Bitcoin up 3% and ETH up 3% as well for the last month. That's the look at your crypto market for the last month. But let's talk about the news that's happening now. Eight days, nine hours away. BTC having. Okay, got you covered. I got some ETF news. Good ETF news for you. As the outflows appear to have come to a screeching halt. Voyager Digital recovers over $480 million from FTX and 3AC settlements. Crypto hot potato. Yeah, everyone, people are finally getting paid, which means more money can go back into the crypto market. Because you know when these people get paid, they're going to be like, dude, should we reinvest some of this back into crypto? Yes, of course they are. The report specified that a significant portion of the recovered funds, approximately $450 million, will be sourced from the settlement with FTX. Thanks, Sam Bankman Greed, you lying sack of crap. You're going to be in jail for a while. This amount, which includes interest, is said to represent about 25% of the original claims. Ooh, 25% to the dollar? That's not that good. Additionally, ongoing proceedings with Theros Capital, Voyager secured a claim of roughly $675 million. From this, Voyager's pro rata share of the initial distribution amounts to only $20.43 million. In a settlement with DNO insurance mediation, will also contribute at least $14.35 million. Now, you want to know about those big juicy checks? Get ready. Voyager's report went on to address logistical challenges, including around 270,000 uncashed checks, totaling $17 million. Just, just listen. This is the headache these bankruptcy courts have to go through. And it's crypto hot potato because as these companies, right, go through their bankruptcy stuff, this stuff takes a while, like a year plus, man. So as they go through it, there's a lot of logistical messes and it's crypto hot potato. You're getting money from this person who's waiting to get money from this person who's waiting to get money from this person. A significant portion of these checks, around 187,000 of them, are for amounts less than $25. Well, if you don't want to cash those checks, I gladly will. And here is the bankruptcy document because as always, any article you see in this video, along with all my other ones, will be linked in the description below. So no, this is not hopium crap. This is actually real news. GBTC ETF outflows hit a record low as market anticipates the having. Dude, this is good. Why? Because Grayscale, the one that's been bleeding out the most money, seems to have bandaged up the wound. Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust, GBTC, and exchange traded fund has experienced a significant drop in outflows. That's good. Reaching a record low that was nearly 90% less than the previous day. On April 10th, GBTC experienced outflows amounting only 17.5 million in a stark contrast to 154 recorded the day before. So outflows are slowing down. Well, that's good because the halving isn't far away. Now, Kraken is delisting Monero in Ireland and Belgium from my fans across the pond. The reason they're doing that is privacy concerns. See, governments don't want you to have privacy with your money, but, but yet when we ask them for documents, they cite privacy as a concern. Oh, we don't need to provide that to you. You just have to trust us. Well, government, you just have to trust me that I'm not fucking you over with my taxes, right? Fucking losers. Kraken posted a notice saying it would halt the trading and deposits for Monero on May 10th. 
The exchange added that all margin trading positions must be closed. If not, Kraken will close them automatically. The exchange also highlighted that it'll fully delist Monero from its platform on June 10th. This means withdrawals for the Monero token in Ireland and Belgium will be halted on that date. Why is this happening? European Union prohibiting crypto asset providers for providing accounts to anonymous users. That's right. They want to know what you're doing with your money. Well, hey, government, I want to know what you're doing with my money. Maybe I shouldn't give you any more money unless you actually use mine correctly. Notice from Kraken is here as well. Now, Brad got up on the mic at Paris Blockchain Week. If you did not see my coverage regarding Paris Blockchain Week, I will have that video linked at the end. Totally worth it. XRP is best positioned for a US ETF. This is what Brad said, okay? So I think there will be other US spot ETFs. Unfortunately, I think it's going to take a little bit of time because the United States SEC is fighting it. In fact, for those of you that are watching right now, it's the SEC that will approve the ETFs. So don't look for an XRP ETF until the case is over. They're not going to approve an ETF if they're going against Ripple for XRP primary sales, right? We just got to get through that first. Brad states, I think one of the things that people don't fully understand and they haven't really paid attention to in the United States, there's only two cryptos that have regulatory clarity. Bitcoin, and because of the fight we had at the courts, XRP has regulatory clarity that it's not a security. And so that is, I think it's different. It does matter. To answer your macro point, look there. There will be other ETFs in the United States. Now, if you want to hear and see Brad on the mic, I've got that linked for you as well. Looking at the XRP price action, okay, obviously no pump on the news from Brad. That's fine. But think, if XRP does get an ETF down the road, and it will take some time, we do. We have to get through the court case first. And then you know how the SEC is, right? You know how they did it with the BTC ETFs. They're going to delay, delay, delay. So you're going to submit for the ETF once the court case is done. They're going to delay a, bit, a little bit, and then we're going to get it. Now, does that mean XRP can pump just like BTC did with the ETF news? BTC almost 3 x through the whole ETF news cycle. Now, would you assume that there would be more or less demand for an XRP ETF? And be honest with me here. Would you be willing to get into it? Would you want to get into the old stock market and start trading some ETF action on XRP? Or would you stick with native token directly? Either way, I think this is a really good sign for XRP because honestly, we're all thinking the same thing. Once they get rid of the court case, we should be able to see XRP start moving more than what we've seen here as of late. And with Brad saying an XRP ETF is going to happen, we just got to wait out the SEC, that could be good news for all XRP holders. And literally as I was recording this outro, my daughter just sent me a message saying, Dad, I'm going into labor. That's right, Klaus, is going to be a grandfather times two. Now, let's get back to crypto and talk a little bit as I'm going through some emotional happiness after just receiving that message. Now, will we see an XRP ETF? It's Honestly, it's very, very likely. I am waiting to see, though, how long it's going to take for the, the, uh, the Ethereum ETFs, right? How much the SEC is going to delay that. And honestly, we do have to wait for the court case with Ripple in order to go through the ETF for XRP. But in the meantime, we're seeing outflows from Grayscale's GBTC slow way down, and they were the ones that were bleeding billions in the market. Damn it, Grayscale, why'd you have to screw us like that? Now, Monero getting delisted. Governments don't want you to have privacy and have no KYC AML stuff when it comes to you and having money. But see, the problem is, is the government blows your money left and right, like a drunken sailor on shore leave seeing the ladies on the corner, flipping the bills to them, buying the booze, getting blown and baked. We want accountability and we want it to go both ways. So if there's anyone from the government watching, and I doubt it because the government's fucking stupid, and yeah, you know how that goes. But if there happens to be anyone from the government watching, my message to you is this. You don't want me to have privacy with my money. Well, I don't want you to have my fucking money because you waste it. You piss it away. And in fact, we know 2024 is not going to be the year of regs because you're just going to be too busy out there. And I'm talking to the government, not the viewer. 
But you're going to be too busy out there whoring yourself for votes so you could win the election this year because it's not just the United States. We have major elections across the globe. So these politicians are going to be whoring themselves, hoping that you donate to them so that they can put the money in the old war chest and cash it out. Meanwhile, you won't let us have a little bit of privacy with our money? Well, until you let me have privacy with my money, I'm probably not going to give you any more of my money. It's a two-way street. you got to pay to play, and you ain't playing, so I'm not paying. Now, in terms of Voyager getting made whole with the bankruptcies, we're, this is going to take time. Dude, you've got like 3AC, you've got Babel, Voyager, FTX, Celsius. I mean, the list can go on and on and on, right? These are all going to take time. What's good about this is that as the payouts happen, you know more people are going to reinvest the money into crypto. Not all of it, right? Some of it's going to go back into fiat in people's pockets to try to make them whole. But some of that money is going to flow back into the crypto market. So see some inflows or be on the lookout for some inflows from bankruptcy proceedings that are getting settled, which could help pump some of the alts that you own out there. Because some of the cryptos that were liquidated faced a lot of pressure. And I bet you that when people get the money back, especially with the market bull run we got now, they're going to want to invest back in crypto. So keep an eye open. What am I doing today? Well, I'm probably going to keep texting my daughter because she's in labor. And I'm going to train today. Electrolytes with a smidge of caffeine. Two running sessions, a biking session, and a lifting session. That'll keep my mind occupied as I talk with my daughter today. What are you doing? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll catch you cool cats later. It's time to hydrate. Oh,